Got a 2007 Saturn Ion. Uh, this guy's jacked up, so it look a little cocked to the side there. Uh, what's going on is the starting circuit. Uh, it's not defective, but there's some symptoms that imply that the starter is defective, which it isn't. And uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like on some basic scan data. Um, so I'm going to let you hear it. When I turn the car on, it doesn't want to start. But there is also a, a crank position sensor code. I'm going to put that in the title. Not in the title, but like in the, you know, the something on the screen here. Uh, I can't remember all these codes. Uh, but I'm going to show you that we, got, we have a code present. Um, what you could do to check and make sure that this, it's the crank sensor without having to use an oscilloscope or anything fancy and uh, we're going to go ahead and replace that crank sensor and uh, get this thing back running again but at the moment when you turn on it'll hit like the star is bad you hear like a it'll like a chap like a tap it'll it'll engage and immediately disengage so you hear a tapping noise uh, that will make you suspect the star is defective the thing is this car uh, uses a I would call it intricate starting circuit system um, it there's a, quite a it's not a major highway uh, that the starting circuit has to go through but it does go from the ignition switch to the body control module and from there uh, once the security system is verified and nobody's trying to steal the vehicle then it'll send the information to the PCM ECM to rotate this engine and there's other things within that so um, I'm gonna let you hear it and uh, we'll look at some live data uh, we'll replace this crank sensor and we'll go from there So here's the thing, that first attempt that you heard, it sounded like the starter is defective, but it's not. Uh, the actual uh, second, split second of, of rotation could imply, okay, the starter's work is potentially going out, but that's not the case. So despite hearing that noise of the star, that tapping noise, it's not a starter. It sounded like a low battery. It's not a low battery because we had rotation afterwards. Um, so, and then we, we didn't even have to jump the car off or anything. So I can understand why somebody would suspect, oh, okay, to jump, it needs to jump start. That's not the case. So let's look at live data. Let me show you some things, and um, I'll like, maybe I can further explain what else potentially is going on. But I want to put a visual on what I'm seeing and why we're getting what we're getting, why the star partially engages, and why it doesn't want to rotate like it's supposed to in an effort to start up. I got the old spare tool here. That's the MP808. This is just the backup for the backup for the backup. So I do this before my phone get hot and shut down on me. We're going to go to ignition. And we're going to go to uh, the crank position sensor here. Now this is a, supposed to measure the engine RPM. So this is the raw information from the crank sensor. We have a, a actual a active counter uh, that will go through its sequence of counting the missing pulses or the recent counter but we need to look at the uh, actual RPM signal here so if you look at this time base this graph down at the bottom is six, uh, 1600 RPM 3200 RPM 42 4800 then up to 6000 here so this is our RPM range let me show you uh, what will happen when you try to start up and you get that that uh, suspected starter fault. Let's show you. You see that? And it did on the first try too. So I can slow that down. You can't pause it. But it's supposed to be a gradual ascend. The car wasn't making no 600 RPM, I mean 6,000 RPM during the initial startup. I mean, that's impossible. That's a crazy starter. Let me try it again. Now we had that jolt. It didn't show. Now this is a slow time base, so it's not going to pick up those immediate jolts like you would if you had a, a wider time base within the one second per division. This is one second per division here. So we that's a normal attempt at starting right there. 
Let's try it again. There's that jolt. And it was well beyond 6,000 RPM. It started and stopped. It didn't capture it. Did the same thing. So you see the pattern there. There it is again. So I'm gonna um if what you can do, it's starting to get hot in here. I'm gonna uh, see if that code manifested. Nope, so I still the code hasn't came back up. But um it's that's gonna be a crank sensor issue, obviously. I mean that, that crank sensor is not supposed to be picking up incorrect um will make signals like that. Why don't I do engine control module of live data ignition? And even then you can see it went red at the top there. Just trying to start. Alright, so I'm gonna disconnect the battery from the starter here, right there where we have the jump start post at right, the fuse box. I'm just gonna pull that off. And uh, I already kind of got it parsed and taken off the ease, but it don't seem like things are working out like I wanted to. Bam. All right, so I just took a 10 millimeter wrench here, broke that loose, and I'm just going to screw this off. This little jump tower, the positive. The wire that goes to the starter is this one on the top. Follow the hot wire here. And it goes all the way down towards the starter. So I'm gonna pull this off, get it off to the side, and screw this back in there. And that way I ain't gotta disconnect the battery. Just kinda let that hang. All right, I'm under the car here. We're gonna get the starter pulled out. There's two 15 millimeter fasteners. There's one right here. And then there's another one at the top there. I have my extensions hooked up to it. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Here's our crank sensor. The motor job I had to do, I had to redo the harness on that damn thing. And it's just, I just lift up on this tab here. There we go. Let's push in and pull out. Allow me to. There's a the tab there. That's the lock I was pushing up on. Push down on that little tab and pull out. And it's a eight millimeter to pull this joker out.
Right, they're both the same. I had glanced at it. So here's our two sensors. Here's the new one, obviously. Here's the old one. This is a standard product from O'Reilly's. Uh, sometimes people say the head can get obfuscated with uh, metal or ferrous material from the engine. I've never had it happen. The uh, check engine light, oh, this is a three pin sensor here, so it generates a square wave. It's a, a hall sensor. Of Hall sensor generates a square wave of VR, variable reluctor, generates an oscillating wave. Uh, if you look at it on the oscilloscope, Let's see if we can push that in there. Uh, you know, some people are like, you got to lubricate it. Yeah, it is kind of correct. Makes it go in a little easier. Put some oil on the O ring. Make it a lot easier. Joker don't want to go in there. I was going to use a fastener to press it down in there, but it's not straight. It was going to be cocked. So, all right, so let's get this back in there. Connector. And I think we're pretty good. Just so, uh, pop back down. Start her back in there. We want to see the face of the star this is what it looks like that's that fastener at top at the top right there we're getting it trying to get to put that top one in there first All right, so we're done. I'm gonna, I cleared all the codes out and we're gonna check the crank sensor with the fixed unit. So let's go to live data. Let's go to ignition. And so let's, let's check our information here. Starts right on that first try. So you can see the uh, misfire, not a misfire, but the active counter constantly populating and it stops and repopulates after 255. At some point, from what I understand, the resync that it uh, that picks up the missing teeth will also uh, reset after a specific time. But let's look at the graph. Remember before we had those spikes, even on a one second per division time base. So you see I had tried to start up but it didn't it didn't continuously rotate. Sometimes it's like that. But you see how it gradually ascended? That's what you'll want to see versus those spikes. I'm gonna start and shut it down. Start it and shut it down. That was me. See we don't have those crazy spikes anymore which is great. So this car is fixed. So this Joker's knocked out. For, as far as labor time go, I've been repairing the starter or the crank sensor. It's like an eight hour labor time, uh, depending on how it, 
your diagnostic fees and all that other stuff also. But um, as far as my assessment, I mean, you saw what, what I've done. That was it. I wasn't going to go through anything more strenuous as far as looking up an oscilloscope. Would have been cool, but I just didn't need to see that. Just And just from personal experience, uh, when you have a crank sensor fail and you look at it on a waveform, it would have, it would pose its particular issues and uh, it will have its own host of symptoms based on a, that failed component versus like a timing chain versus a cam position sensor you know uh, we we didn't have any of the follow-up code besides a crank sensor which is which would point us to the crank sensor but you can't always utilize that as a point of reference and like okay just change the part I mean this right here was pretty obvious to me it had uh, it started up when it started up it started fine it consistently failed to start and also one of the main things is that being that it started up fine when it didn't start it backfired so, uh, the crank sensor has a very very integral uh, position no pun intended with the uh, information taken to the PCM so without the crank sensor you the, the car just obviously wouldn't run but it needs that it needs to determine the bottom end position the core late with the top end position to then make the engine run efficient as possible based on uh, it would take that information and, and alter the duty cycle of the injectors timing knock uh, uh, mass based on the mass airflow sensor to take in also I mean all this needs to be calculated and determine how to optimize its performance based on this factory algorithm put it that way uh, but as far as what we were experiencing, the crank sensors, just to say for an example, we had a uniform pattern with my four fingers. Uh, the crank sensor picked up those signals. What could happen, what we experienced lightly was just, it was intermittent. So it was capable of picking up a signal at particular points. But what it probably saw was like missing teeth, if I can get those to work right. So it probably picked up two teeth out of five or whatever versus you know five out of five teeth and that's what we saw in that resync counter um, also I didn't pay too much attention to that because I was looking at something else a little bit more in depth I didn't want to hook up to the oscilloscope because the oscilloscope would have been a little bit over exaggerated but being that the time base was capable of picking up the discrepancy we was able to see that hey look even though this issue was so prominent it picked it up on a slower time base, which is a one second per division, which is crazy slow for as far as um, how uh, the computer pulls or retrieves information. But uh, if you have any questions, hit up in the comment section. I'll try, I'll try my best to respond to people, uh, unless you just ask something that's completely blatantly in the video. But other than that, hit that link, subscribe to the channel, stay informed, have that research on my work. See you on the next one.